We get asked all the time how long the timbers can sit around. So like if you're slow at chiseling and you take eight years to get all 52 timbers cut and, and ready to assemble, uh, there's no question that the one that you cut on the beginning of that eight years will have uh, changed uh, quite a bit compared to the one you did yesterday. <laughs> so does that affect things? Well, ideally you would cut out your entire timber frame in a month and then put it all back together the next month. But life is real and life is the way it is and you just make it work. So for instance, <clears throat> let's say that you had a, uh, <clears throat> a post, <clears throat> a beam <clears throat> and a post. And uh, you had this all cut out uh, two years ago <clears throat> and now you're putting them together. And it turns out that this beam here is slightly twisted. So that now this post right here is six inches up in the air at this end because of this twist. Well, if you leave it there for four or five days, it'll settle right down to the ground. <clears throat> Just that weight, and you might even put some weight there. And so all of the lignum and cells and everything else in here will take on the shape that you want it to take on. And you might even be able to get away with putting it up and then with a chain uh, <clears throat> hooked to the other end of the building, just or a come along, <clears throat> just click it over a click at a time over a week or two and get it to be back in place. There's always a way to make these things happen. It's, uh, you, you don't need to, to think that it must be done a certain way. The species that you've chosen will have a lot to do with uh, what happens. Certainly if you built the whole thing with red oak and you take eight years to get it all together, it will be difficult to put together. But if you do it with pine and you do put it together in two years, uh, it'll work out fine. There'll be a little bit of twisting here and there, but you'll be able to bend it back. Uh, when you do bend wood back, you do it very slowly. A come along is a great thing to do. You go click, click and walk away. And the next day, click, click and walk away again. And you'll be able to get things to be where you want them to be. It's never, it's never a disaster. It's just more little problems that you deal with. So the question is, <clears throat> Uh, if you're milling your own, uh, should you mill them all right away <clears throat> or mill one or two <clears throat> and then uh, uh, mortise and tenon them or whatever and then uh, later <clears throat> mill some more? What you are trying to achieve here is a certain amount of uniformity so that <clears throat> everything happens kind of the same. So obviously you certainly should mill all of your timbers and then stack them like this so that <clears throat> the day that you start doing mortise and tenon joints and so on, all of the timbers are there. They're accounted for, they're stacked, and, uh, and, and even numbered so that you know what each one is going to be doing. Another question that we often get is, what do you do with your logs? So <clears throat> you're cutting your own trees, let's say, or you're buying a truckload of logs and they get dumped in your yard. Uh, what should be the first thing you do? Well, the first thing, of course, is to get them off the ground because the, the, uh, the kinds of bugs that get into trees relate to the ground. So that means using a couple of logs as bunks and then rolling all the other logs on top of those. The second thing would be to get all the bark off as soon as you can. The, if you're not going to be milling them right away, you should get the bark off because the bark protects the beetles, the lictus beetles and others that uh, eat what the bark has to offer and then start to work their way into the, the new part of the, the log. Here's our log and about this much of it is nutritious <clears throat> to all those beetles. So they'll come from the bark and start working their way in and out of this. <clears throat> so you'll notice that they're doing that to the first two inches. So when you're milling, often that all gets cut off anyway. So the mill will often get rid of all of that. But uh, you're better off to get rid of the bark first to cut down on that uh, totally. The worms, the, uh, the beetles and so on, uh, defecate all over the place in their little channels. And uh, that's full of fungus. And that quickly turns into rot. So you, you, you also want to be sure that there's no water exacerbating that that problem. If water gets into all of these little channels and so on, it makes the wood soft and more edible and you'll get more of that uh, infestation. So yes, get them off the ground, get the bark off, 
And then uh, with the bark off, they could probably sit there for quite a while. So people are asking me <clears throat> about ideal times uh, to, to do this process. The cutting down of the trees, for instance, that <clears throat> is best done in late summer or fall. If you do it in the spring, <clears throat> when the juices are madly being sucked up into the tree, the water content is quite a bit higher. The, uh, <clears throat> but as far as uh, cutting and having things sitting around and so on, I would not be all that preoccupied with, with worrying about timing because what is more important is your life. So you're leading your life. You're taking kids to school, you're going to work. All of the other exigencies that happen, those should be the priority. The advantage to worrying about the wood minute to minute is very small. It's just not worth worrying about it. <clears throat> so if you get it all done within two years, that's fine. You don't need to lose sleep over it. Just two weeks ago, uh, I milled a big pile of logs that I've been meaning to mill for 20 years. <laughs> this pile has been sitting out here for 20 years and all the bark had fallen off by itself. And of course, it was quite riddled with these uh, worms. And yet, we found that probably 80% of those logs made wonderful timber. There were a few uh, holes here and there, but the animals were long dead. And uh, th that would be an extreme of how far you can go with wood. 20-year-old stuff, totally unprotected. It was all uh, pine. And uh, we made it uh, eight by 10 and six by eight timbers to create a 48 foot long shed on the side of a barn. When you do that kind of thing, uh, you do want to be absolutely sure that there are no live uh, <clears throat> termites, bugs, uh, beetles. The beetles are the worst uh, in that wood because it could go from your new, quote, new timber to the rest of your building. So you certainly want to be sure that they're dead. So let's say that you have put up a building and the wood is shrinking a great deal. So we have here a post and we start off with a SIP panel, let's say, that has been <clears throat> screwed to the post. And uh, 10 years later, the post has shrunk away from the panel. So this classroom here is now 20 years old and uh, none of this happened. There's no shrinking away from the, uh, from the SIPs. But it's conceivable. And I was once uh, asked to be a witness in a lawsuit where <clears throat> the red oak timber frame uh, had shrunk so that there was, you could see right through here. There was like a half inch of space. And <clears throat> that was because it was green oak, uh, which uh, does that a lot. So that was repaired later by just putting cove molding <clears throat> in all the corners. And the building actually looked more uh, fancy than it did uh, to begin with. So this was done everywhere that a post was against a, uh, a SIP panel. But that's the only one that I've ever seen in 45 years of building uh, timber frames that required that. It was an extreme case. And uh, the building was actually uh, taken down uh, eventually because all of the windows broke. It was an extremely expensive building. It was close to a million dollars. And the lawsuit was quite, uh, quite extensive. Well, thank you for watching. <clears throat> I hope that this uh, calms you down a little bit. Uh, I can uh, tell you that we've built thousands of homes with uh, timbers and, and SIP panels and so on. And have, this business of green wood has not been a problem with the occasional odd building that uh, you know, one in a thousand uh, cause problems. So feel courageous. Go out there and uh, cut out your timber frames. If you do have any questions or problems, feel free to contact us. We're here and uh, happy to help out. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in another video. Hey there. Thank you for watching. Here at Shelter Institute in Woolwich, Maine, we teach a wide variety of house building and timber framing and carving classes. We'd love to see you here, but if you can't make it to Maine to take one of our classes, our online class is available at shelterinstitute.com.